Taina, Taina. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, Jackie Ina. What's good, people? I know I look really basic. I know I'm looking like a five out of 10 at the moment, but today I'm gonna be, wait, I forgot my theme song. What is wrong with me? I mean, after the magic of filming with Naomi Campbell, has unleashed on my channel. I'm not gonna lie, he gotta, takes me a minute to get back in the groove of things. Thank you guys for supporting that video, by the way, but let's get right into it. Jagger, 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 jagger. So listen up, today I have a very, a very serious topic that I wanna cover right this instant. Can we just talk a little bit about what soft glam is and what it isn't, okay? Soft glam is typically not glitter. I know that we like to say makeup has the rules, but these labels have labels for a reason. Like there's a reason why it's called 60s makeup or contour, like you can't just say, well makeup is whatever you make it. No, contouring is not whatever you make up. Contouring is not filling in your brows. Soft glam is not three layers of glitter cut crease. It's just not, that's something else. It's great, but it's not soft glam. <laughs> All jokes aside though, for real though, I wanna show you guys a little bit of how I like to do soft glam. 90s, very matte, basically no shine. And yes, technically you could say anything is soft glam, but then it wouldn't be soft glam. Like what's the point? I've been seeing a lot of people tweet about this and post looks using like the labels and the hashtag soft glam. Some of them are, are quite far off of what it actually is. I think some great examples that I've seen lately, I have a whole photo album dedicated to this look because I happen to be a fan. I don't usually often do, so like I like highlighter, you know, like I like shimmer on my lids, I just do. But if you wanna be truthful, the true soft glam pioneer is Nikki Posley on Instagram. If you don't follow his work, please do immediately. He is so incredibly talented. Whenever I'm on his Instagram page, I feel like I'm a 90s R&B girl group. Ron K. Araji just did a really bomb. Can you, if you could just focus though, this is, honey, this is soft glam. This is it. This is all the way it. She's wearing gloss, which is fine. Like you can't, I'm not against gloss at all, but think of soft glam as kind of monochromatic. It's just like all taupes, beige, just browns, whatever's natural to your skin tone. It is the true quintessential meaning of nude for you and your complexion. That's what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna be jumping right in. I'm also gonna be using the new Vesca Beauty Bronzers. It is to the sponsor of today's video. Shout out to you, Vesca. Thank you. I think a couple of you guys have heard about them. I've gotten questions about them and I'm gonna be testing them out today on my channel. I'm gonna start off by priming with my Milk Hydro Grip. Shout out to this being the 2019 prime of the year, girl. Like this primer, oh. Milk come through, you deserve rounds tonight. We're going full, well not full matte, at least I don't think. We're gonna go a little bit more on the matte side, but also I'm gonna be doing a lot, with, like the complexion is quintessentially the single-handedly, expeditiously, the most important part of the whole look. Like, duh, what do you think soft glam is? Now you know she loves, she isn't me, loves a mattified primer face before we step into complexion. So I'm gonna take my Laura Mercier translucent powder. I use this in the shade brown. This helps really prep the skin for a all day wearable face. It also minimizes shine. I, I feel like, I I break this down almost every time I do it. I don't know why people still ask me why I do this. I explain it every I explain it every time. But nonetheless, I always do my videos as if it was somebody's first time watching it, except for the brows. No one cares. Yup, 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 yup. But this is why I do this. I do this because it helps the makeup last way longer and it helps tone down shine if you have naturally oily skin, which is a blessing, don't get me wrong, because oily skin's great, but when you're wearing makeup, you just wanna be able to kind of balance it, you know what I mean? Even it out so it doesn't get too out of hand. I don't talk a lot about this foundation on my channel, but this is a really, really beautiful formula. It's the Shiseido Synchro Skin Self Refreshing Foundation in the shade 510, because I'm black, West African at that. Most of us usually have like, well, I feel like most women of color in general, not just black women have different tones, different parts of the face that aren't all the same color. I find that this matches me better in the center of my face, but I always have to correct around my mouth. So this thing has a lock. So you flip it this way, it's locked. And then you flip it that way, boom, boom, boom. And then I'm gonna take a nice, oh, this is a good brush. This is from Iconic London. It's a paddle brush. I'm gonna 
This is a really good color. I mean, I feel like the undertone is pretty spot on. The coverage of this foundation is really nice. It kind of reminds me of like a lighter version of Born This Way, dare I say, see poo play. I think it's great for summer. And I don't really talk about this a lot on my channel, but I really like this formula. And by the way, real quick, I just want to say, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, but you've made it this far, how rude, how dare you? Carisha, please. Like for real though, get off your high horse, dude, and just join the Jagana family. You know you like me. You know you're going to keep coming back. Stop fronting. I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna drink my kombucha and wait until you hit that button. This is for extra mattifying reinforcement and also extra long wearability. Take your setting spray. Then blend out your foundation. Mixing your setting spray in with your base is 100% scientifically. You guys, I don't make this stuff up like it's literally in the Bible. This is how you get your setting spray to last way long. Like, this is how you get more out of it. That's what I'm trying to say. This is how you get much more out of it. And if you think I'm playing, test it out for yourself. Like I give you the tips guys. It's up to you to test them and try them out. I forget that this foundation does warm up a little bit more when you apply it. Like it looks slightly darker on than when you first like like swatch, but that is a really beautiful, look at how beautiful that coverage is. Two pumps. I love this look and I love how trends just recycle and we're going back to like what the 90s supermodels used to look like. I mean, I don't look like a supermodel, but I like the fact that we now have like access to all the cool stuff and the cool looks that they used to use. And you don't necessarily have to, I mean, yes, I love Shiseido, I love Laura Mercier, but there's also ColourPop, there's also NYX. There are so many other brands that you can do the same vibe with. You just gotta find them, baby. Maybe I'll do a part two and try to do the drugstore, not as bougie equivalent of this. Let me know in the comments if you want that. I typically, that's probably very rare. Like I don't like doing the same videos over and over again, but for soft glam, I might t I might have to do it to them one time though. Now we gotta do some correcting and add our first layer of concealer. Now, as you guys know, or maybe you, maybe, maybe you don't know. No, it took you so long, but welcome girl. I like to let my concealer dry down a little bit because it has more coverage and it makes them way easier. Like they don't blend out as easily. I and mean, wait, what am I trying to say? Okay, when a concealer is still wet, like the product still comes off your face right? When it's dried down, it's more likely to stay more in place. I'm going to take the Kevin Aquan Sensual Skin Enhancers. I use the shade SX15. Sometimes I also use the shade, I think it's 14. I think it's the red shade that comes before this. But anyway, I'm going to take a little bit of that right under my eye and start concealing the darker under eye circles. Now, I don't want anybody to get it twisted, sis. Whenever I say I'm correcting darkness, it doesn't mean the dark, like it's not that the darkness is not a mis is a mistake. No, sis, your darkness is by God's design and you are beautiful and wonderfully made in his image. But when you're wearing like a full face of makeup, like I also have the right to have an even complexion. And we're just doing this to make sure that everything seamlessly blends. And also nobody wants to look darker under their eyes. Like that's just not a thing. Like I don't know if that was ever a thing in ancient Egyptian history or something, but you know how trends change and evolve. But here on my planet, this century, this hemisphere, we don't do that, okay? Maybe down at Area 51, but here in good old Los Angeles, no, mm -mm, you're canceled. So that shade has a red undertone to it. And what I'm gonna basically do is blend this out, leaving my concealer as is, because remember, we like to let that dry down. I also went for Kevin Aquan Central Skin Enhancer because the coverage is pretty much as full coverage as it gets for concealers. Because this look is so heavy, it's definitely more full glam. It's definitely more flawless coverage, no flaws at all. We're going for that vibe. Now I'm just patting this concealer under the eyes out, looking less tired one stroke at a time. <sighs> <laughs> like the complexion is literally without a, a single flaw. Complexion's looking flawless. If you're wondering what brush this is, by the way, these are from Hourglass, they're pretty awesome. You guys know I love to use the multi-use sculpting concealers from Too Faced to Contour, but I actually stopped using Sable. I think I was using Sable before. Coco, Coco is so good. It is actually, I've been going like not as 
dark to contour. Still obviously darker than my skin tone, but like sable is like really dark and ganache is even more dark. Stay a little bit closer to your skin tone. Don't go for a super, super three to four shade. Don't go too dark on the contour guys. So as you can see, I also hit the little corner. Like, I don't know what this area is called. I have no like the nose bridge. I mean, I always thought this was the nose bridge, but whatever. I'm gonna just take a Morphe blending brush and I'm gonna blend this out. And you wanna blend this into your eyebrows. You want what Jackie Ina has. If you want what Jackie Ina has, you have to do your makeup this way. This is how I fake a nose contour. And yes, it is a little high up. That's okay, because we're gonna also conceal down the middle. I'm gonna blend this out. You can use a sponge too. Like I don't discriminate, girl, use whatever the hell you want. This is why I don't like doing brows first because I personally don't feel like I can really give the skin the attention it deserves. But everybody has their own preference. I actually like to blend my contour all the way into my brow. So I'm following the natural contours and shapes of the face, like the shadows of the face, but I'm also going like well into my brow and blending upwards go over the middle of my face again i want to actually show you guys like the transformation one step at a time as you can see the contour is present but it's not as strong as what you're used to seeing like i'm i use i usually take it there with contour but this is soft hence the name soft glam and it's also very subtle i love this color i freaking love coco this is the most gorgeous contour ever oh my god you know who's also so good at soft glam is aisha haroon if you don't follow aisha haroon first of all queen of brows wow Hats off to you, sister girl, just for that alone. She does a lot of those kind of looks, and I love her. She's a fellow brown girl, and her makeup always looks literally flawless. We're gonna do a little bit more highlighting with Chestnut now from Too Faced, and I love this color because it's a nice highlight that isn't too, too off-putting. Very light, very golden, very creamy, and the coverage is freaking flawless, baby. Sometimes I like applying this with a brush. Sometimes I don't care, and I'll just go straight in with the applicator. It's nice to know I have the option of both because this actually does have a really good applicator, but today I'm gonna do it with the brush brush and what might encourage one to use a brush you may ask well that's a great question if I want a little bit more control over like where the product is placed if I also want to control like how much of the product actually hits my face I'll use a brush if I don't care if I'm being a little lazy fair that day I'll just go right in right with the applicator it just depends on like I said my mood my vibe my look and then I prefer to blend out my concealers with a sponge. I just feel like the look is a lot more seamless. Now the thing is, is this has to be damp. I've come to realize there's still a lot of people who are very curious about sponges and how they work and how they don't work. I can't speak for other sponges, but I know for sure with the Beauty Blender, it has to be damp. It's just not the same product if it's not damp at all. It's not the same product at all. And also, please make sure to hit that jawline, sis. Like I tend to be like way more yellow olivey back here. There's nothing worse than that line of demarcation. So I always just try to, you know, curve courtesy blend courtesy blend right around that area now we really want to take it there with the highlight because like i said the skin is the standout part of this whole entire look i'm gonna go even lighter with concealer only a little bit though this is also from too faced the shade caramel no caramel's pink hold on what i meant to grab was butterscotch she's a little bit more golden i hope you all can find it in your hearts to forgive me for my transgressions now this doesn't mean we're trying to look lighter we just really want that under eye area to be the stand out part of the whole look I'm gonna go in with a little bit of this and a little bit of that. It started with a kiss and went on to that, like lit truly that much. I know it feels like I'm using a lot of product and that's cause I am, but I'm using a little bit of a lot of different products catch my drift. And the less product that you use, the easier it is to blend out. Also, the more control you have because there's nothing worse than putting on too much product too soon and then you're screwed and you can't erase. Like you can, but ain't nobody got time. I'm gonna move on to Honey from Fenty. This is a really warm, beautiful, golden toned, powder this is definitely not a powder in my opinion that i like using every day because it is so warm but that's the look that we're going for today so that's what we're going to use I'm gonna dab a little bit of that in the center of my forehead this is where i get shiny by the way definitely want to pack it on there shout out to everybody with an oily t-zone and then i'm gonna apply some of that under my eyes now i'm gonna go back to my laura mercier powder this is my skin tone shade and just powder the rest of the face this is gonna keep everything locked into place now the next step is my favorite part hold on let me get my brush let me get my brush let me get my brush so I can't locate the actual brush that I wanted to use, but you know those eyeliner brushes that aren't you know those eyeliner brushes that aren't angled, they're just straight flat top? I can't find that brush right out. But I grabbed something else instead. T48 from the Makeup Shack. I'm actually gonna take my powder again from Fenty and dust off the excess. We don't wanna make a mess. 
we want to get this right the first time and I'm going to draw a line right down the middle of my nose, AKA highlighting. This isn't really, really being done the way that I want it to be done because this isn't the right brush, but it's fine. We make it work. We always do. And then I'm going to move upwards and start patting that in. No, just change the brush. Start patting that into my forehead and really precisely whittle this down. We're gonna leave a little bit of excess powder for our under eye to catch any fallout. Then we're gonna move on to my bronzer. I'm gonna use the shade Kissed by Bali today from Vesca. I freaking love this brush. Nabella's Elf Collab Brush, it's so good. So I actually take like the side of the brush. I like it for both, that's really dark. I like this brush for both bronzer and blush because it's so soft, but I'm just gonna start patting this in to my skin. And a little bit of that really goes a long way, but I feel like I'm doing the exact opposite of what I taught you in the beginning, because this is so dark. It's fine, I'm gonna go over my foundation brush, like right over it to tone it down. And then on this side, I didn't add as much. That top layer of a new product is always the freshest. But this bronzer has pretty good coverage and it comes in seven shades. There are 30 dwellers each and they smell really good. They have like a really soft, I don't know, it reminds me of like butter. I, I like, I love a scented bronzer. If you don't, oh well. Off of that, because like I said, this bronzer was a little deep. I'm gonna take my Anastasia Mahogany just to kind of warm it up a little bit more. And also using a clean blending brush, I'm gonna take some of that bronzer into my brows. A little bit of Vesca, the Vesca bronzer, mixed with the ABH. Now for the brows, it's time to give the girls what they really, really want. Don't tell me what you want. It has to be a very structured, very flawless, but also like I've re recently been reevaluating how dark I go on my brows and I think I go a little too dark on my brows than what I really am comfortable with. So normally I take like an almost black, like really dark brown brow pencil, but because again, this is soft glam, we're gonna actually go up a shade before that. And this is from Maybelline. It's in the shade Deep Brown. I'm also gonna kind of go back and forth between this one from Maybelline and the new Fenty brow pencil. I really like these. The shade that I use is dark brown. This is the brow MVP. And I'm just gonna use little tiny baby hair strokes and just shape and fill in that brow. I don't shape that much more extreme outside of like my natural shape. And I do have microblading for a reason because it makes filling in my brows so much easier. Then I use the smallest, and when I tell you the little itty bitty titty-ish amount of concealer to clean up like the tail end of the brow just a little bit. You don't even see the product when I apply it. Like that's how little I'm using. I'm not playing with my eyebrows today. I'm putting in the work. I'm gonna take a little bit of warm brunette brow gel. Now, to be fair, I've never used this before. I'm just looking for something new. This is from Hourglass, a brow gel, and it definitely looks a little bit more on the ashier side to me, but we're gonna use it anyway. I always like to set the brows because I feel like a nice set in place brow really kicks up the glam a notch. You feel me? This is a good brow gel, by the way. The brow hairs really latch on and catch the brows really well. We're gonna move on to eyes. This is probably the most important part of the tutorial because the eyes are very sculpted. They're very, dare I say, sexy. I live for a monochrome moment. I'm not gonna lie. I just, I don't do it a lot, but I have a deep appreciation for it. So I took chestnut, wait, that was butterscotch. That's fine. I'm gonna use butterscotch, whatever. I took my concealer from Too Faced and I'm gonna use that to prime and prep our lids. And we have our little shadow catcher down here, our translucent powder that we left earlier, just to make sure we don't get any fallout and mess up this beautiful beat to the deck, to the deck. I like using this big fluffy brush because it really helps me like blend this out and also apply the product pretty quickly. Naturally, I gotta use my palette because I have the best crease colors ever. So I'm gonna start off with Ginger. It's my palette from ABH, welcome. If you're new here, I have a palette with Anastasia Beverly Hills and it's freaking awesome. I'm gonna take a blending brush and dive right into Ginger. Start smoking that out in my crease area. I accidentally dropped my brush into Shookington. So that 
that's where the purple's coming in. Ignore that. I'm just gonna conceal over a little bit, block it out, block out the negativity, and then do it again. This is just our crease color, guys, so she don't gotta be perfect. The bigger those circles are, the more blended this is going to look, and the more flawless this is gonna look. And also, start off small. Don't brush on like, I mean, you can do that if you want, if you just wanna get the look out the way and be fast, but I feel like the less color that I use and I slowly blend up, the better my eyeshadow looks turn out, so I don't pack on my brush when I do a look like this because I ain't got to. Without necessarily adding more product, keep on blending, and that's really gonna help airbrush that whole lid area. Side note, I picked these up recently from Sephora. I'm very honest. I feel like if I've, I don't wanna say drag, drag is a harsh word, but I feel like Huda's been doing a lot of positive things with her brand as far as better and fairly representing dark-skinned black women on her platform. She just recently collabed and created a lash with Kalana Barfield and I'm not gonna lie, like outside of being taken off the PR list, which, you know, I get it. I'm not gonna take it personal. I feel like she has, for the most part, handled the criticism pretty well. Like she doesn't clap back, she doesn't block people. Um, so I recently have been using her brand again. I'm not gonna say I'm still not a fan of the things she's done in the past. Of course, not here for that never will be. But I definitely feel like since she started the brand, Sis has been pretty consistent. So I gotta give credit where due. She came out with these nude palettes. So I'm gonna be using a little bit of these. I'm gonna take this darker brown here. I definitely appreciate the fact that every single launch, people of darker complexions are thought of and are present and are very much so a part of the conversation. You know, people always ask me like, how does a brand recover? I feel like that's how you recover. I feel like Huda is doing everything you should do in the face of being criticized for not being inclusive enough. Shout out to you, Miss Huda. I've been peeping, I've been watching you. And I know there are definitely some other black influencers who feel the same way. I will incorporate her stuff as I see fit from time to time. And these little mini nude quads I think are so adorable. As much as I would love to just be able to use one palette for this entire look. There kind of is no soft glam palette out there with all nudes that kind of works with my complexion. That doesn't have colors that I won't have to go out from other palettes and use. So I'm just gonna go back and forth probably between these two. I'm gonna take credit for my palette, the darker matte brown. And I also wanna go on record and correct something that I mentioned earlier. I think that if you were to do a soft glam look, it's okay to use shimmer on the eye, but as long as it's applied, Softly. So I'm taking credit and I'm really deepening and rounding out my eyes with this color. This is just my favorite dark brown, my favorite dark brown. If you wanna get a true eye shape, you can actually tilt your head back and you can see exactly where the shadows are going to fall when your eyes are closed. That's a little cheat sheet. Make sure you get just along that top lash line. Like I like to stop the shadow about halfway through. And this is gonna take some time. There's no, pop of color really. You really wanna take your time and blend this out slowly and make sure everything looks seamless and flawless because like I said, there's no standout cheek color, no distractions, there's no lid color, the shimmer lid that you can slap on to hide all of the patchy blending if there is any. So you really wanna take your time and blend this out. Even just by going in with a clean brush and blending again, pretty clean, pretty flawless. And I'm going back to my deeper blending brush, no product, and I'm just blending this all out, blending it around how. And also taking some of that ginger and hitting the inner corner of my eye. So you wanna basically blend from your crease all the way here. Crease here, crease here, crease here, crease here. My hands a little numb. Been blending profusely today, but it's fine. Okay, now we're gonna cut the crease. We're gonna cut the crease. I know, I know, I know. Tell all your friends, tag them in this video because I rarely do this. I'm going back to a little bit of butterscotch, the really, really light concealer shade that we used earlier. And I'm gonna start working butter, scotchisha, onto my lid with a sharp brush. The same one that I use for concealer. Now what I wanna do is I'm gonna take a more dense brush. This one is from Sigma. This is the E50. It's like really thick. You see that? Yeah, you see that. I'm gonna take that and start to kind of blow it out around the edges so that it looks a little bit more blended into my skin. Like we want it to be a sharp line, but then it can be kind of don't. We want this to all be blended and seamless. Now this actually, from far away, if you squint one eye and close the other, doesn't look bad, but we need to put shadow on top of it. This is kind of setting the precedence for what we want that eye to look like though. So I'm gonna go to the Huda Nudes palette. Now this is the Rich Nude Obsessions palette. I'm gonna take this color right here. It looks very washed out on camera. It's not that at all. And using the same brush that we did for concealer, I'm just gonna flip it over to the clean side and dab, dab, dab a little bit at a time, not too much, and start to concentrate that color color right over where we applied the concealer. 
that is pretty. Do you see how my eye crease is here? Like this is where my socket is. Yeah, I'm going right, I'm bulldozing right over it to make it look a little bit more blown out. Then we're gonna go back to Ginger and start blending out around that crease area. We don't want it to look too harsh. We don't want there to be like a super like light and matte line compared to your skin tone. We wanna blend that out and use Ginger kind of like as a buffer color. I'm gonna carve the eye just a little bit more using a little bit of credit and a blending brush. Just deepening that transition just a little bit. I don't know where the hell that speck of glitter came from. Especially because in this area, like you want this to be seamless and blend it out. Clean it up. Sponsored makes an excellent shade for soft glam looks. I'm just saying, no one asked me, but that's beside the point. Oof, girl, give it to me. That just looks so pretty. Dare I go just a little darker, why not? I'm gonna take the darker brown. Actually, it's not darker than credit, it's just warmer. It's just slightly more more red, I'll, I'll say that. I'm taking a really tight brush now and I'm going right in to that crease area. I'm just drawing a line, just tracing my eye socket, that's it. Back to the blending brush, you guessed it, and blend that out too. Just to add some dimension, it's really not a soft glam look unless you have base liner in your waterline. Get with the program, ma'am. This is from Makeup Forever. It's their Artist Color Pencils. I like to use the shade Infinite Sand. It's actually a beige liner. So this is the equivalent of when people put white in their waterline to like brighten their eyes. But because <laughs> the way my dark skin is set up, like that look is cool and everything, but I feel like it's a little too stark for my complexion. So I go with off-white and I use a beige and it gives you the same effect, but not as shocking. I'm gonna apply this into my waterline, only about to there. I'm not gonna completely close off my under eye. I'm just gonna apply it like right to there, not all the way inside, just right there. Look how gorgeous this is. And look how this just elevates the look. The eyes look completely different. You can't tell me that my eyes don't look completely different now. They do, you lying, shut up. This is very un -Jackie like behavior, but I'm gonna take liquid liner, not because I want it to look real wingy. I'm just literally lining my top lash line, that's it. We wanna close the gap between our lash line and our outer V color. So you don't even gotta wing the line. Just draw a line at your lash line. I don't know if they still sell this liquid liner, but this is like still one of my favorite liquid liners from Lancome, the Grandiose liner. I don't know what happened to her, but shout out to her. Now we're gonna need to stamp shadow over that line because I don't want it to just be black. I actually want it to match the color of the beautiful gradient that we have going on in the eyes. I'm gonna go back to my rich palette. I kind of want to throw in like a little bit of color. So I'm gonna use this red. No, actually I'm gonna just mix these two. Yeah, mix them two, mix them. And I'm gonna go right over. I'll also mix in some of this eggplant color. It's pretty dark. Go right over it. See what I just did there? And now that added a fun little pop of color to the eyes. Ooh. Don't let that lid color get lost though. Go ahead and apply a little bit more if you need to. Are y'all getting like yogurt vibes from this look or is it just me? That's what I, whenever I do like these really light colors on the lid, that's what I feel like. I feel like I'm putting yogurt on my face. Now I'm gonna go back to my powder and this is like a fun little step that I think really cleans up and helps sharpen the eye look. I'm gonna take my translucent powder. Make sure you're using a sponge that's pretty sharp. This is the Dose of Color sponge, I love the sponge. And I'm just gonna go around the eye area just to clean it up, make that look a bit more precise. It really helps to fine tune that eye. Now we gotta do the under eye and I'm not really gonna go too heavy. I normally do, but I'm gonna peel back for this look, okay? I'm gonna take credit very lightly. Don't get carried away, Suzette. As close to my lash line as possible, I'm gonna apply some of credit. But like, I really, wow, that was intense. Intensely close. Look at how little I put down there. This brush also from the Bella's collection from e.l.f. Using a bit of ginger, I'm gonna go right over that. You want this to be nice and blended seamlessly. And the best way to do that is to layer your transition color just like you do in your crease. We're pretty much done with the eyes. So it's now time to sweep off the excess powder. The nice thing is when you do this, like you have an, a now like refreshed set of powder for the under eye. For blush, because this look, and this look ended up actually being a lot more pinky mod than I initially imagined, but it's still kind of on trend, which is fine. I'm gonna take these blush duos. I, whoa, did you see that? Did you see that? I forgot some of these are actually like damaged. I don't know why they do that, but I ordered these online and the whole entire highlight comes out sometimes. So love these, but be careful about that. These are from Cover FX and the shade that I have is Mojave Mauve. So you wanna go blue pink for this blush and always, always, always matte. Well, well, <laughs>
I mean, you could use shimmer, but like shimmer just makes the skin glow a little bit differently. And this look is not about glow at all. This is all about perfect, even, shine free complexion. Take a step back, make sure you assess the beads. Wow, I have on a lot of blush. I'm fine with it though. Without actually adding more powder, I'm just gonna take whatever's left over my little blending brush and just kind of clean up right below where we applied our blush. Basically, we're faking a reverse contour. For lash, I didn't realize I had this lash, but this is kind of bomb. There's so many different types of kids' lashes. I just, it seemed like all of them, and I was just like, okay, well, how long is it gonna take us to get through all of them? I feel like I discover a new lash every other day. So this is from their I Envy collection, and the color, I mean, just kidding, the name that I'm using is Real Amore. Isn't that really pretty? Kind of getting bridal vibes from this one. And I think it's perfect for this look. I love a wispy, also somewhat spiky lash. Oh baby, this lash is so serious. Oh my God, this is so pretty. I don't know what I was expecting, but it definitely wasn't this. It's even better on, like it's gorgeous. Pat's mascara is really good for applying mascara on falsies. Pack that in your lunchbox. Okay, what are we doing for little, 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 little. This is my favorite soft glam nude lip combo at the moment. I'm using the Stunna Lip Paints from Fenty. The first one I'm gonna use this Unveil the Dark Brown. I like this brown because it's a really cool tone ashy brown. It's not too warm. I love using this kind of like as a liquid liner for my liquid matte lipsticks. I'm also very much so team black girls who overline their already big lips. So don't be afraid to overline your already big lips. Well, don't go carried away though. I got carried away. Now to fill in my lips, I'm gonna take this nude, also from Fenty in the shade Unbutton. I love, love this color. And it's gonna go perfect with my dry lips and with this look because it's kind of cool tone. Do you ever just sit there and be like, damn, my lips is dry, like, but like, you can't think about nothing else past the fact that your lips are so dr damn ashy. <laughs> I mean, NYX invented nudes with their butter glasses though? Tell me I'm lying. And that lip lingerie set that they came out with like four years ago, bomb. That's actually still one of my favorite nude lip sets of all time. I don't know if I wanna use praline or, no, this is too pink. I'm gonna take praline. This is like, oh God, do you see this? Do you see this? You don't, cause you're sleeping. They make the prettiest glosses and they smell so good. And they literally have a shade for everyone. Literally. We're gonna set, 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 set with our setting spray again. This is the one from Morphe, code edges. I'd never promote my code. I have a Morphe code. For those of you guys that don't know, I have a Morphe code. I've always had a Morphe code. Edges. Mm. Yes, I'm a real classy lady. All right, my beauties, that is the final soft glam look. Let me give you a close up. Let me give you a close up. Let, let, let me drop this heat. Let me set that eyes on you. This is actually my first time doing this variation of this look in particular. Even though soft glam does have a particular look and vibe, it's pretty much just like all matte, neutral textures and nudes, monochromes, taupe, beiges, any type of color that like matches your skin tone. I'm really, I'm proud of myself. It took me four hours to film, but that's okay. The longer the video, honestly, the better the content. And I just live for it. I live for giving you guys good quality content. That is the end of today's video. Thank you again for watching another Jackie Ina production. Look, between you and me, I don't know what the hell brought you here, but I'm glad you came and I'm glad you stayed. Why don't you stick around though for a couple more videos? I mean, I make it so easy. I just put them right here, plug and play. All you have to do is click. Oh, and shout out to everybody from Brazil, from the Middle East, from France and all French speaking countries, all Portuguese speaking countries, all Arabic speaking countries, because we now have subtitles. Oh, and Spanish, Latin America Spanish though, not European Spanish. All right, I'm gonna give you one last look. B, she's freaking B, girl. I don't wanna hear, I don't wanna hear nothing. I don't wanna hear nothing no more. Cut the cameras. Cut the cameras, dead ass.